Last month we created a group to pour and this month we will put polish on it and specify it to open when a command button on a menu is clicked. Hi, this is Crystal. Opening the report, currently named Product Sales, you can see the alternating sections are gray. This is fine for detail, which displays the product that was sold and its price. Summary sections will be colored differently. The Group Summary section for Product category is long, and it takes two lines to display. That is because the sum was chosen as the aggregate function in the report wizard, but it is the only function being used, so we don't need more than one line. Space can be saved if the descriptive information was combined, extra words deleted, and the numeric sum was on the same row. In Design View, if the property sheet is not showing, press Alt-Enter to toggle the display. If the property sheet is docked to the edge of the screen, you can drag it by the title bar to float it. Floating lets you see more information and move the properties window around. Resize it by dragging a border when the mouse cursor changes to a resizing arrow. In the ProdCap footer, select the text box control with the descriptive information. On the property sheet, click in the Control Source on the Data tab. Press Shift-F2 to zoom it. The first time you use the zoom box in an access session, you may want to set the font to be bigger. This will be remembered until you close the database. Set the equation to be equal prodcat space ampersand space double quote mark space subtotal space open parenthesis double quote mark space ampersand space count open parenthesis asterisk close parenthesis space ampersand space double quote mark space record double quote mark space ampersand space IIF open parenthesis count open parenthesis asterisk close parenthesis equal one comma quote quote comma quote s quote close parenthesis space ampersand space double quote mark close parenthesis double quote mark PRODCAT represents the value in the PRODCAT field name. ACCESS automatically puts square brackets around fields and tables. You don't have to type them, and as long as your field doesn't have spaces or special characters, ACCESS will add them for you. Double quote mark space subtotal space open parenthesis double quote mark means that a space will be inserted then the word subtotal, then another space, and an open parenthesis. Count open parenthesis asterisk close parenthesis will return the number of records in that section. Double quote mark space record double quote mark means that a literal space and then the word record will be inserted. IIF is immediate if and is the function used in equations for if. If there is exactly one record in the count, nothing will be added to the end of the word. Otherwise, S will be added to the end of the word, making the word records. Finally, a closed parenthesis is added. Space ampersand space must be used between all expressions to concatenate. Looking at the report, the description takes a lot less space. Go back to Design View. Change the equation in the first DT sale footer, which is by day, to start with DT sale. That will be the date of the sale. And then the rest of the equation is the same as we just typed. In the DT sale footer that summarizes by month, change the beginning of the equation to 
after the equal sign, format, open parenthesis, date sale, comma, double quote mark, MMM, dash, YY, double quote mark, close parenthesis. The format code of MMM, dash, YY, will give the three-letter month abbreviation a dash and then the two-digit year. In the DT sale footer that summarizes by year, use the same equation for month but change the format code to double quote mark YYYY double quote mark for the four digit year. Go to print preview and then to the last page. I see I have 845 pages. Scroll to the bottom of the last page to see how all the section equations look. In each case, they are shorter than where the left edge of the amount sum starts. Since the amount sum starts at 3 inches, set the width of the product category equation to 2.8 inches and the left property to 0.2 inches to match the product category header. Scroll to show the other group footers if you don't see them. Select the equations in each of the date group footers. Click on the first one and shift-click the rest to add them to the selection. The top of the property sheet says multiple selection. Set the width of each selected control to 3 inches. Select each of the labels with sum and press the delete key. Select each of the sum amount controls and set the top property to zero. When you click in the vertical ruler, all controls on that imaginary line that extends across become selected. When you shift click, controls get added to the selection. Select all controls in each of the group footer and group header sections that are not already bold and bold them. Close up the extra space in each of the sections by moving to the bottom boundary, then clicking and dragging up when the shape of the mouse cursor changes to a horizontal line with a double-headed vertical arrow. View in Report View and in Print Preview. Notice that sometimes the bottom edge of the box around the amount appears to be chopped. Go back to the design view and make each group footer section slightly taller. Now the boxes show completely. Notice, however, that sometimes a group starts at the bottom of a page and the corresponding detail is at the top of the next page. Switch back to the design view and turn on the group sort and total pane by clicking the group and sort button on the ribbon. Select each group and click the More button. Choose Keep Header and First Record Together on One Page. Now, when you look at the print preview, the header of a group is on the same page as the next group and the beginning of its detail. Now there are also less pages. 727. We got rid of more than 100 pages by reducing the space for the group footers. You will also notice that every other section is colored the same alternating colors as the detail. It would be helpful if the group section stood out better. Each group header and footer section has a back color and an alternate back color property. Set the product category group header and footer back color to pale aqua and alternate back color to the next shade of aqua.
For the day grouping of DT Sail, set back color to pale orange and alternate back color to the next shade of orange. For the month grouping of DT Sail, set back color to pale blue and alternate back color to the next shade of blue. For the year grouping, set back color to pale green and alternate back color to the next shade of green. This also makes it easier to see which footer sections go with which header sections. It is a good idea to save the design before you look at a report. The text boxes need to be transparent so the section color shows through. In Design View, choose all the controls in each of these sections and set the back style to transparent. That looks much better. Notice that the report view shows page one of one. That is because report view is just one long page. Scrolling through, we see it is easier to differentiate the detail from each of the group headers and footers. I like to name reports in the navigation pane starting with R underscore and be a little more descriptive about what the report does. Close the report and select the report in the navigation pane and press F2 to change the name. Call the report R underscore product sales underscore by year month day category. Now we will add a button to open the report from a menu form. Go to the design view of F menu. On the design ribbon tab, choose the button control and make a button on the reports page of the form. Set the button name to btn underscore open product sales underscore year month day category. I abbreviated year to yr month to mo day. I didn't abbreviate. You can make these names shorter. Just type enough so that you know what it is. We could have named the report using shorter abbreviations like that also. Set the caption to Product Sales by Year, Month, Day, Category. Width to 3 inches and left to the same as the other buttons. You can do this by looking at one of the other buttons and copying its left property. The event most often used for a button is the click event, which is labeled on click in the property sheet. When you click the drop-down in that property, you will see any macros that are defined and bracket event procedure bracket. Choose bracket event procedure bracket and then click the builder button, which is three dots, dot, 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 located to the right. Access constructs the declaration line of a procedure based on the name of the control and what event it is. This is one reason it is important to name controls well before you attach any code to them. A line starting with a single quote is a comment and will be ignored by the compiler. When you move off a comment line, it turns green. I like to create a comment with the date I am writing code, and I use YYMMDD for dates. On the next line, type do command dot. IntelliSense will kick in with the macro actions you can pick, since do command means do a macro command. 
We want open report. As you type, the IntelliSense list moves. Once you type enough so that open report is highlighted, you can press Tab to pick it. IntelliSense then prompts with arguments or parameters that can be specified. The report name is required. Optional arguments are enclosed in square brackets. It is best to copy the report name from the navigation pane so you don't make a mistake typing it in. You can copy by pretending to rename, but then press the escape key to not really rename. The report name is enclosed in double quote marks. If you don't specify the optional view argument, the report will automatically go to the printer. AC view preview means print preview. For now, we will not specify any other arguments. Whenever you write or paste code, remember to choose Debug Compile from the menu, then click the diskette icon on the toolbar to save. If there is a mistake in the syntax when you compile, Access will give you an error message and highlight the problem. I click OK for the message box. Report is misspelled. I fix it, compile again, and then save. Now for the fun part. Switch to form view and test the button. It works! Print Preview has a zoom slider in the lower right, so you can easily zoom in and out. You can resize the window or maximize it. The menu has controls for the user to put in beginning and ending dates. Now we will modify the code to look to see if anything is filled and limit the report based on what is specified. The name of the start date control is date 1. The name of the end date control is date 2. Go to the code behind the menu form and create a new procedure to process the criteria. In its own space, under the option statements at the top, and not in the middle of any other procedure, create a function called get where underscore sales date that will be private to the form it is behind and will return a variant so it can be null, nothing. The reason we make it in its own procedure instead of just adding to the code that processes the report is because later we may add more report buttons that also need the same criteria. The declaration line starts with the word private, then a space, then function, then a space, then the name of the function, then open close parenthesis, then as variant, or as whatever data type. I like to add a comment at the top of the procedure with the date, and usually also my name, or whatever I'm calling myself that day. I use year, year, month, month, day, day format for dates. Because the function name will be used in the code, I copy the name of the function so I don't have to type it again. The first thing is to initialize the return value of the function. Press Tab to indent one level. Indenting helps the code be easier to read. Paste the name of the function and then type an equal sign. If nothing else changes, the function will return null, which means nothing. Now comes a comment to construct the criteria, so the line starts with a single quote. First I want to test the start date to see if anything is there. Since I will be referring to this control more than once, I type with me.date1. Me means the form that this code is behind. Date1 is the name of the start date control. There is a dot between the form reference and the control name. With some object needs to be balanced with and with. Now we test to see if there is a value in that control. Dot value refers to the value. If not is null, 
open parenthesis dot value close parenthesis means that if a value was specified after the word if and the condition to test, add the word then. There's a space between all words of the code. Everything is typed in lowercase. When you move off the line, Access will correct the case for what is understood. Just as with, if must have, and end if. Indentation is used to help understand what is happening. If a value is there, the return value of the function is set to the condition. The condition is the field name, which is DT sale, an operator, greater than or equal to, and the value to compare to. Date values are delimited with pound sign, which is also called octothorpe, number sign, tic-tac-toe, and other names. A delimiter marks the beginning and the end of a value. Literal values are enclosed in quotes. I'm adding a comment above the assignment statement to explain what is happening. Debug compile what is there so far, and nothing appears to happen. So there is no error. Copy everything from with me.date1 to end with and paste below so that it can be modified for date 2. I create a new line by pressing enter. Since the cursor is not at the beginning of the line, I press backspace to move back one indent level and paste. Indents don't matter. They sure do make the code easier to read. The next block of code uses the date 2 control. Since there might already be something in criteria, the word AND is used to join what was there before to what is being added. Using PLUS to concatenate inside a phrase in parentheses means that Access will treat everything in the parentheses as null if any part in the parentheses is null. This is a handy way to only include AND if it needs to be there. As before, the DT sale field is used and number sign delimits the value. Space underscore at the end of a line means that the code statement is continued on the next line. This is a handy way to break long statements into smaller pieces that fit on the screen better and are easier to understand. This time, less than or equal is used since we want the value in the field to be less than or equal to whatever value is specified. I'm also adding more comments. Now that there is a function to process the criteria and return it, the open report statement can use it. I will add a line continuation to the open report statement since it's getting long. When I move to the end and type a comma, IntelliSense prompts me with what comes next. The filter name argument is being skipped, so another comma is typed, and a WHERE clause without the word WHERE is specified. This will be the return value of the function we just wrote. From the Debug menu, compile the code, and then save. Again, for the fun part, testing. Hopefully it will work. Switch to form view and click in the date one control. Click on the floating calendar and pick September 1st. When the report button is clicked, you can see that the records start on the specified date. The last record is at the end of October since that is the latest sale in the database. If you want to see all the records, delete the criteria that is there and click the Report button. If both start date and end date was specified, the reports would show just the records in that range. Or if just end date was specified, it would get everything from the beginning of its history, ending with that date. This video corresponds to the Access article in the November 2016 issue of Strategic Finance Magazine.
Thanks for joining me. Through sharing, we will all get better.